Jesus, I think that's all of them. I don't even know where to start. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today, the day has finally arrived. We are decluttering my eyeshadow palette collection. There are currently over 100 eyeshadow palettes in this pile. I love eyeshadow. This is not going to be a super cutthroat declutter, but it's a declutter that needs to happen because I know I do not need or use 100% of these palettes. And actually quite a few I've not even touched. So before we jump into the declutter, you're gonna wanna get a snack, get a drink. This is going to be a long, long video. So that is your warning. Go to the bathroom, get yourself a drink, sit down, relax. And if you haven't already, I hope you consider subscribing, hitting the little bell icon so you're notified whenever I post a new video every Monday through Friday. So I don't even know where to start. I think I'm just gonna start with what's closest to the camera and then work our way through this whole pile. So the first palette I have here is the Take Me Back to Brazil palette from BH Cosmetics. And I still haven't even used this. It is a beautiful, colorful palette, and I need to give it a chance. So I'm not going to declutter it until I actually get the opportunity to use it. Next, we have this Moana palette from, uh, where did I get this? From Hot Topic. I actually picked up a couple of different palettes from Hot Topic, because I was going to do a whole video just on, like, Hot Topic eyeshadow palettes. That's also where I got this palette. This is the Interstellar palette from Blackheart Cosmetics. There's still the plastic on it also where I got this palette. I picked them all up at the same time. I love the packaging on this. It's beautiful. Um, and I like that they're all shaped like little coffins in here, but the shades themselves are fairly boring. The only thing that really attracted me was the packaging. So I'm going to go ahead and declutter all three of these because I'm not going to get around to making that video and they're just sitting in my drawers and taking up space. And since they've never been used, they can definitely go to someone who's actually going to use them. Uh, this one, I know I'm just going to go ahead and declutter. This is the Elf and Christian Siriano, Siriano collab palette. And... Uh, the shades are just okay, the brush inside is garbage, as usual, but, I mean, nothing about this calls, like, a look to mind. It just seems like a weird jumble of shades, so this is gonna get decluttered. I got this in a boxy charm. this is the Soria, Sor, oh, I don't know what is wrong with me today that I cannot pronounce that, but... It's actually a really nice neutrals palette. It's a good quick palette because they're arranged in some nice trios right here that you could just go for. I think the quality is really good. I was really surprised by this palette because at first glance it's not a whole lot to work with. But I really enjoyed this palette and it's one of the few neutral palettes that I love so I'm going to hold on to it. Another pure palette that I got from BoxyCharm was... What is this? I guess it's just the pure and BoxyCharm palette. This one didn't impress me as much. I mean, it just, it's blah, you know? Like, these kind of looked the same shade. All you have is like a magenta and a blue. Uh, uh, no. I especially hate like matte blacks of shimmer in them. Like, why does that exist? No. So this one's gonna get decluttered and it's barely been used. So a series of palettes that I am going to keep are the Lorac Pro 1, 2, and 3. Let me just show you guys what they look like this was number one it's a little bit messy but i think this is an amazing palette it's the formula of Lorac shadows if you have not used them they're a lot different they're very similar to like the formula of abh very soft super pigmented so i really had to learn how to use these shadows but this is one of the best like neutral palettes ever and i love the packaging it's so thin and sturdy i love to take this traveling with me whenever i need to do like makeup for an event or like for a wedding if i have to go somewhere and look nice and put together i like to bring this the Lorac pro 2 is essentially the cool toned version of this i absolutely adore the jade shade right here it's gorgeous and the navy shade up there i just love how like buttery and smooth all of these shadows are so this is the cool toned version all the mattes you could ever need all the shimmers you could really ever need and then the Lorac Pro 3 is the warm toned version. 
This one's a little bit more beat up. I did get more use out of this one than out of number two because I was just in like the warm toned kind of phase. Love this terracotta shade. If you can't tell, it's a little beat up. I think these shimmers are absolutely gorgeous. They look very neutral, but it's just, I liked having these shades in the Lorac formula. If I'm being really honest, I don't think we needed all four of these. I think these could have been different shimmers because they kind of look the same, but I do really enjoy the shimmers down here in the second half of the palette. I definitely didn't get the th the four because the Lorac Pro 4 just looked really boring. So I really think this is all you need in a collection. You've got the original, you've got the cool toned version, and then you've got the warm toned version. And I think that's it. <laughs> I have two of the mini Huda Beauty palettes. I have the Mauve Obsessions and the Electric Obsessions. The Mauve Obsessions isn't really touched yet. I haven't even gotten to dig into this one yet. So I really do... Oh wait, this, the thing is still in the mirror. Let's peel this off together. If I don't ruin my nails doing it. Ready? And the Electric Obsessions definitely has gotten a little bit more love. I actually did a whole video on a couple of looks with this palette. I'll throw that up in the cards if you want to check that out. But this is a really good, compact, colorful palette. I just wish that a few of the shades that are mattes would have been shimmers and vice versa. But I think you've got some really good colors to work with here. I do have a few of the City May palettes from Maybelline. And I don't think I need to keep all of them. So let's go through these. This one is in Rooftop Bronzes, and it's a nice, shimmery, neutral palette. I think it's really great quality from Maybelline, and I like the shades that you get in here. I just kind of wish that there were some mattes in here, but that's actually why they came out with an entirely matte version. So I think if you have these two together, they're really affordable, then you've got all the neutrals you would ever need, and they're from the drugstore, and they're super affordable. So I think these two I'm going to hold on to. Again, this is in Rooftop Bronzes, and then this one is Matte About Town. These two are fairly similar, so I don't think I need to keep both of them. The top one is the collaboration with Makeup Shayla, and the bottom one is in Graffiti Pop. Now, I basically have the neutrals in the majority of this in the other palettes, with the, like with the exception of that purple, but I can get the purple in here, and then I'll also get a blue and some other shades. So I'm going to declutter the Shayla one just because it's too similar to the other two that I'm keeping. And I'm going to hold on to the rooftop or graffiti pop. Next, we have these 10 pan palettes from Wet n Wild. This is their new formula and their new packaging. I really want to hold on to the Comfort Zone palette because I really do like this better than the original one. So I'm going to hold on to that one. I really don't need to keep this neutral palette. It's a great palette, but I've got so many neutrals in my collection and this can definitely get passed along to someone else who's going to use it. This one's a little bit more unique. It's not a basic peach. It is, again, very neutral with the exception of that blue. Like, if you take out that blue, it's really neutral. Yeah, yeah, I want to hold on to this one because I am going to get rid of quite a few of, like, the quads from Wet n Wild. So I'll have two of their 10 pan palettes. Speaking of the quads, here we are. I'm not 100% a fan of purple eyeshadows. I really don't know why I picked this up other than for the sake of picking up the quad to review. It's not even opened. I'm not going to open it. I'm going to pass it along. This is the quad in Lights Out. It's like a smoky palette. I'm not reaching for it. It's not opened. I'm going to pass this one along as well. I'm also going to pass along this palette. This one is called Hooked on Vinyl. I thought the color looked a little bit interesting before, but again, it was like that pop blue that caught me. Like, I've got all the neutrals already, and I've got blue. So this one, again, isn't even... Oh, this one, actually, I think I opened. Yeah, this one's been opened and used, so I'm going to sanitize it and pass it along or donate it. These two I'm going to keep. So they're both the Walking on Eggshells palette from Wet n Wild, but one is, like, their original formula in the old packaging, and one is the newer one. I really wanted to use both and just, like, compare and see how different the two of them are. I found this one on clearance at Target, actually, a couple weeks ago, and then this is the new one that I bought with the rest of the palettes. I think I also bought that at Target, so I am going to hold on to both of these because I do want to compare them. This is a quad that I am going to pass along. This is in Silver Couture. It's a quad from L'Oreal. I'm just not really into these shades. 
I don't think I can get a full look out of this. I'm not a huge fan of the formula, you know, overall from L'Oreal. So I'm just going to pass this along. This is a quad from Kat Von D that I got at TJ Maxx. This is the shade and light eye quad and this is in the shade Rust. I really do like these colors, but I wasn't reaching for this quad at all. Um, I definitely don't support her decision on vaccination, so I haven't bought anything new from Kat Von D and I'm not sure I will, but I don't want to declutter things that I might use just for the sake of trying to make a point because because like I already spent the money so I'd rather get the use out of the product so if anything I think I might try to pan this at some point in the future same with her 10th anniversary palette this is actually a gorgeous palette it's beautiful and I really do want to get the use out of it since I've already purchased the product so I'm gonna keep both of those three palettes that I absolutely adore from Too Faced. They're all in their tin pan, the nine pan palettes. This is the Natural Matte palette. This one is brand new because I just picked it up at TJ Maxx. They've had them on sale. I think that they're going to start repackaging all of these in their new packaging, which is why I've been seeing them pop up at Marshalls and TJ Maxx. So I got this on sale. I have their Natural Eyes palette. This one is fairly old and it's got a lot of love in there. <laughs> And then I've got a newer version of the Boudoir Eyes palette as well. I love the formula of these. They're so, you know, beginner friendly, but also beautiful and classic. And you're never left like wondering how you're going to use these palettes. So I think they're really good, especially if you can get them on sale. Keep an eye out at your TJ Maxx and your Marshalls. Very good. I'm going to hold on to these. This is a palette that I'm quite conflicted about. This is the Mac and Patrick Star Stay With Me eyeshadow quad. The packaging is beautiful but I'm not reaching for these at all. Like I'm not a huge purple eyeshadow fan, so I'm not sure why I picked this up to be honest, but you know what, I, I'm not reaching for it. I'm not just gonna hoard it. I really need to pass this along, so that's gonna go. I have the MAC Semi Sweet Times 9 palette next. This is a small palette and it's very neutral. I really just love this row right here. I'm gonna hold on to it because it's the only like MAC actual palette that I have and I know I will get use out of these in the fall so I'm gonna hold on to the Semi Sweet Times 9. I already know I'm gonna get rid of this palette. This is from Cargo Cosmetics. It's the Getaway Palette. I got this at a Marshalls. At first I thought the shades were interesting but really there's hardly any pigment here. It's just overall not a great palette, so I really wouldn't suggest this. It's so tempting because it's so cheap at TJ Maxx, but really, you, it's not worth it. This wasn't even worth like the 7 or $8 I paid for it, so that one's gonna go. A palette that is definitely staying is the Thirsty Palette by Jeffree Star. I just got this. It's brand new. I actually really like this palette, so holding on to that one. I'm also going to be holding on to the Blood Sugar palette. This is another gorgeous palette from Jeffree Star. I just love looking at it, right? Just look at it. Gorgeous. And I love the packaging. I actually have this out on display on my shelf in the corner because the packaging is to die for. So I am holding on to this one as well. I forgot another City Mini palette. I don't know how this one got lost. This one's in Urban Jungle and I'm definitely going to hold on to this because it's all greens. <laughs> and if you know me, you know I love greens. So I'm definitely going to hold on to this. This is the NYX Ultimate palette in Ultimate Brights palette. I actually just picked this up not too long ago. I haven't really tested it out fully yet so I am going to hold on to it until I finish testing it out. This is a uh, ColourPop palette that has a lot of singles in here. I'm not going to go through all of my single shadows because we would literally be here for hours. So I'm just going to put my singles off to the side and I might do like a separate video decluttering those because I know I've got some repeat shades in here. I just, I don't have the room to go through them right now, but I could definitely, definitely do like a single declutter video. If you guys want to see a whole video just on decluttering my singles, let me know down below. This is a Clinique palette. This is called, it's just called the All About Shadow palette. This was in a gift set I got for Christmas last year. And honestly, I have not reached for this palette. I don't think it's a bad palette, but it's, the color story is a little bit strange and I'm really not reaching for it at all. So I need to pass this along. 
This is a palette from Alamar Cosmetics. I got this in one of my last boxy charms, and I think this is actually a gorgeous palette. It is a beautiful summer palette. I love the shades in here. I love the selection. I love how they did the mattes versus the shimmers, and I love the packaging. It's just, it looks like a little book. It is adorable. So I am going to hold on to this palette. An oldie-ish, but a goodie. This is the BH Cosmetics Carly Bible Deluxe Palette. I really think this is such a great affordable palette for beginners, for intermediates. You've got some beautiful highlight shades down here that work for a lot of different skin tones. All of the shades are really pigmented and they blend really well. It's a little bit boring in terms of shade selection, but I've never gotten a look out of this palette that I didn't like. And I love the packaging. You get a nice big mirror in here and I love the marble. I just think everything about this palette is just done so well. This is my Naked 2 palette. I absolutely love this palette. I believe this was one of the first higher end palettes that I ever bought. I haven't hit pan in any of these shades yet, but I'm definitely very close to doing that in Booty Call and in YDK. This is just such a great, versatile palette. The only thing that I, I'm not 100% in love with is that you only really get two, or you get three mattes in here, and I think four mattes. Oh, I cannot count. You get four mattes in here, so I think... I would have liked one of these shades to be a matte just to kind of even out your selection because you've got like a light toned one, a mid toned one. I would have liked a darker matte before the matte black, like just a little bit. But overall, this is a great palette. I love the packaging. I know some people don't like this kind of packaging for palettes, but I love them. I love it so much. So I will be holding on to the Naked 2. This is the Too Faced Chocolate Gold palette. It's an absolutely stunning shimmer palette that we're not going to be able to focus on because it's so shimmery. If anything, I'm not sure that I, I love the neutrals over here. I think if they're going to go for an all shimmer palette, they should have gone for an all shimmer palette and just done it all shimmers because you're not really reaching for these as much. I really think they could have done some more stunning shimmers over here, but you know what? Overall, it's a great palette and I love the selection of shimmers that you have in here. So if you're looking for a nice um, like companion palette, just something you can have to have all your shimmers in one spot. This is a great one. And I do like that the, the mirror here is the whole size of the top part. So if you do want to go traveling and take this with you, it's nice and sturdy. It's got the clasp and it's got a gigantic mirror. And the front could double as a mirror too. <laughs> Another really reflective palette is from BH Cosmetics. This is the Glam Reflection Smoke Palette. This is another really good neutral palette. It's got some nice pops of color in here. It's really easy to work with. It's super, super affordable. And I also got some great looks when using this. This is also another great palette to travel with because it's so sturdy and it's got a gigantic mirror. I did a whole video on this one. I'll throw that up in the cards as well if you guys want to check it out. This was actually the first time like a company's Twitter <laughs> noticed me because I did the video and I posted a video and BH Cosmetics retweeted the look. And I mean, that was exciting for me at first because I had never been noticed by a brand before. And I know like they like to retweet people, but it still made me feel special. So this is a bit sentimental for me. So I am going to be holding on to it. This Marc Jacobs palette is my 2018 Pan That palette. So I will, of course, be holding on to this until my Pan That palette is complete. This is the Urban Decay Distortion palette. My best friend actually picked this out for me. I've used it a few times and I do love this middle row of shades. I'm still playing with like mixing the top row and just kind of layering them. But overall, I think it is a very interesting palette. It's definitely different and I love this orange. Like this, you don't see that kind of orange like anywhere. It's gorgeous. So if I would keep that just for the orange alone, but I do love the whole middle row. I think they're great quality and I am going to hold on to it. And also the packaging is stunning. Look at it. Okay, so here are where the hard decisions are going to have to come in. Because I definitely only got all of these because I wanted to be a completionist and get all the stupid meat matte palettes, but I don't need all of them. First, we have Meat Matrimony. This is, I think, the best palette out of all of them. I think you've got a great selection here. They're gigantic pans, so you do get a lot of product, and I think this is the one out of all of them that I reach for the most. 
And also look how adorable like the cover is, that's cute. So now between Meet Matt Nude and Matador, Meet Matt Nude is kind of meh, it's a little bit boring, but then again they're supposed to be like your nude neutrals. The Meet Matador is a little bit warmer and I actually haven't reached for this one as much. So I think I'm going to keep Matrimony and Matador and I'm gonna get rid of Meet Matte Nude because they're kind of the same palette. The last one in here, the last one in here is the Meet Matte Schmaker palette, which is a little, honestly, it was a little disappointing. I, as the more I used this, the more I realized I didn't need it. I mean, at first the pans are really, really small. They're not really anything groundbreaking. They're not paired up in ways that make me inspired. The only ones that I love are like here, but that's a black and a green. Like I can find a black and a green multiple times over in my collection. So I need to also declutter Matchmaker. I forgot I actually had another one of the Huda Beauty Obsessions palette. This is the Smoky Obsessions palette. I've actually been getting a good amount of use out of this palette. I think it's a really good smoky eye palette. Of course, it's called Smoky Obsessions, but I really think if you're like just getting into smoky eyes, you're a little bit hesitant about smoky eyes, so that this is a really good palette to start with. And I think that it's small, it's got a big mirror, it's great for travel if you really do want to just pack it and do like a day to night look out of this, you know, bring it to work with you and just kind of touch up a little bit before going out. I think this is a really great option. My only complaint is that this silver right here does have a good amount of fallout, so I wouldn't use that one if you're traveling or you're not where you can clean up. But the rest of the shimmer shades are stunning. All right, the Jaclyn Hill Morphe palette. This is gigantic. I have one of the original releases, so it's not the nicer packaging. The shades I've taped up top like I saw Raw Beauty Christie do. That was a really good idea. I think this is a great palette. Do I think that there are way too many browns in here that are really similar? Yeah. I think they could have probably cut out two rows and made this a little bit of a more compact palette. But overall, the quality is amazing. The shades are beautiful. Again, I've never gotten a look out of this palette that I didn't like. This isn't one that I'll take traveling just because it's big and I'm afraid that it'll break, but it really is a great palette and I think it deserved the hype that it got. Now, I don't know if the hype for the new ones is deserved, but I still think this is actually one of the few good products from Morphe. Okay, so I'm gonna be straight up. I am not gonna declutter any of my Natasha Denona just because they're so expensive. Um, so this is the green-brown palette from Natasha Denona. It's, I will say I was a little bit shocked by how few mattes there were in here. I thought there would be a few more mattes. I would have liked some matte greens in here, but overall it is a stunning, stunning palette. Definitely holding on to this one. I have two of her smaller five pan palettes. One is a very neutral with a pop of berry, and then the other one is the green and brown one. Honestly, why did I buy this? I have a green, I have an entire green bound palette from Natasha. Why did I buy this? Oh, but I don't want to declutter it because it's so expensive. <laughs> Jesus, okay. But why did I buy that? Jesus. So I'm gonna hold on to both of these. And last but not least, I have both the Sunset and the Leela palette. The Leela's a little messy since I've been using it more. These are some stunning shades right here. I'm not as big of a fan of the mattes in this palette. I really don't think they match the color story. I don't think they work well with the shimmers. But these shimmers are stunning. Absolutely gorgeous. I really do like the Sunset palette. I like the mattes in here. I think they work well together. I think this is a cohesive color story. I just really wish the mattes were just a little bit more pigmented because when I go for a look with this palette, I find that I'm spending way too much time trying to build up the mattes. And for like how expensive this palette is, I shouldn't have to spend that much time building up mattes. But this is still a beautiful palette. It was the one that started off the, or kicked off really, the warm toned shadows and you know when this palette came out everybody lost their minds and how many people do you see actually using it still right i need to bring this back out because i died over this palette for months it took me months and months and months to get it because it kept selling out and i 
bought it almost a year. It was almost seven months after it came out that I actually was able to buy it. So uh, I'll probably just be buried with these two. Just all of my Natasha did on that. I think we're like halfway done. Woo. I have two more palettes here from Too Faced that I am going to be holding on to. The first one is the Sweet Peach palette. I absolutely adore this palette to bits and pieces. I love the quality. I love the packaging. It's just buttery, smooth, blendable. If you only pick up one palette from Too Faced, I would say either the Sweet Peach or the Boudoir Eyes because I love both of them so much. The Next palette that I have from Too Faced is the Chocolate Bar palette. This is the Semi-Sweet Chocolate Bar palette, and I think they're discontinuing this, because I know like some of them aren't on Sephora.com, some of them are at Ulta, and I haven't seen these pop up at like TJ Maxx and Ulta, so I'm not sure if they're going to just repackage them or if they're getting rid of them. I originally, I was going to pick up the Bon Bons palette, but I can't find it. So I think this is going to be the only chocolate bar palette that I'm going to have. I don't know if I would pick them up if they do reformulate them. I mean, it's not out of the realm of possibility, but for right now, I'm good with just this semi-sweet one. BH Cosmetics Zodiac Palette. This is one of the loves of my life. <laughs> I absolutely adore this palette. All the baked shadows are beautiful. The mattes are really great. The only thing is I wish I had a light shade in here. Like I wish this was a matte shade to set my just primer. I think that would have been perfect because I really don't like this one as a highlighter. I think it's just a little meh, but the rest of the shades are stunning. I love this palette. <laughs> I have two palettes from Juvia's Place, and the first one is the Festival palette. Love the packaging. The only thing is that these are so fragile. So like this shade up here, Ofala, that one shattered, and I tried to repress it, and it did not repress that well, and the shadow actually got into a few of the other shades. So I wouldn't recommend traveling with this. I, I'm actually a little hesitant about ordering these online. I, just, I know they're online only, but they're just so fragile. Um, but I do love the shades in this palette, with the exception of like this black down here. Not a huge fan of that one. But I do love these shades, and I like the amount of product that you get and how affordable it is. Thankfully, I didn't have that problem with this one. This is the Deuce palette. And this one just screams like the holidays to me. Like I love this green shade right here. That is gorgeous. Um, I like that you've got like this neutral transition shade. I like the pink up here. And this is a nice like duochrome -y kind of shade right here. I think we could have done without these two shades. Like if you cover those up, the palette just looks a little bit like more cohesive. But overall, it's a really good palette, and I'm glad that none of these shades have broken, because if these got mixed up together, I think it'd be a lot messier. <laughs> the next palette I have is a palette that I got from Hot Topic that I actually used and did a video on. This is the Artemis palette, and this is referring to Artemis from Ready Player One. I absolutely adored the book Ready Player One, and I kind of thought, like not even kind of, I thought the movie was trash. <laughs> The movie was garbage. It was nothing like the book. Um, and this eyeshadow palette, uh, meh, meh. Like it was okay in the video that I did, but overall I've not reached for it since. And because I don't like the movie, I feel like that's part of the reason why I'm not reaching for it. So I'm just gonna declutter it. Next, we're gonna go through all of my Kylie palettes. The first one I have right here is from her Weather Collection. This is like her pastel palette. I really like this palette. I like the shades. I like that you have like mattes on the top and shimmers on the bottom. Kind of like a Lorac Pro palette, but not quite. And I just like how different the shades are. So I'm definitely going to hold on to this one. A Kylie palette that I didn't like as much is also from the Weather Collection. This is like her Eye of the Storm palette, I believe. This... Ugh. I don't know, I was really sucked in just because of the yellow shadow, and the yellow shadow really isn't that great. Take away that yellow, and look at it. Right? Right. I don't need this palette, I just need to pass it along. Next, I have her purple palette right here. This one actually has a mirror in it, and you've got the shades right here. Like I said before, I really don't reach for purples that often, but I do like the variety of the purple shades you get in here, and I love this shade right here. I don't know what it is about this shade, but it's like the perfect, like, pewter shade. Let's 
stunning, right? So I'm definitely going to hold on to this palette. I'll also be holding on to the last Kylie palette I have. This is the Blue Honey palette. I do love the shades in here. I also did a whole video on this one. And I just, I love the, the layout of this palette. Like, the crisscross and you've got these. Oh, I just think this is a really great palette. I wish there was a mirror in it. I really don't know why there isn't. But, really good palette. Holding on to it. This is the Tardis Pro eyeshadow palette. I've had this for a while. I got it as a gift a long time ago. And it's time to declutter it. I rarely reach for it. The shadows have gotten really chalky. It's made a mess of the mirror and it's just not that great of a palette. So this one is going to get passed along. This one was a little tough but I never reach for it so even though it is a really good palette I need to pass it along. This is the Summer's Night or Midsummer Night palette from Bad Habit. You have an amazing collection of neutrals here. Like if you're looking for one palette that has all the neutrals you will ever need in your entire life, look no further. The quality is amazing. It's spectacular. The only shade I don't like is this one. That's like a brown matte with some shimmer in it. That doesn't need to exist. You don't need it. But this is an amazing palette. But A, I've got plenty of neutrals in my collection and B, I'm not reaching for a huge palette when I need neutrals. So even though it's got a nice mirror, it's great packaging, it's great quality, I need to pass it along because it's just sitting in my collection. Moving along with the Bad Habit palettes, let's go through a few of the other ones that I have. I have the Bad Habit Aura palette, which was a dupe of the ABH Prism palette. I thought long and hard about this palette. Honestly, it's great quality and I like the shades in here, but I never reach for it. And I find that I'm really only keeping it for these two shades right here. It's a nice metallic green and a metallic lilac. I have lilacs in my collection and I don't wear purple enough to justify it. And I've got plenty of greens. So I feel like even though it's a good palette, again, I will be passing along the Aura palette. A palette I will be keeping is the Artistry palette. This is a dupe for the ABH Mario palette. It's amazing quality and I love the shades in here. It's got a nice mirror right there in the top and it is a little bit smaller than the rest of the Bad Habit palettes as they were basing it off of something smaller. So I think this is a really good palette that I will be holding on to from Bad Habit. Next I have the Arabesque palette and this is a dupe for the Soft Glam palette. Uh, yeah, I compared this directly to Soft Glam and it wasn't as good of a dupe as some of their other palettes. I think this is just a little bit of a dud. I think it was a bit of a dud just because it's such a matte heavy palette and Bad Habit doesn't do mattes as well as they do shimmer. So this one is also going to get passed along. Next, I have the Athena palette from Bad Habit. This is a dupe for the... Uh, I forgot which palette it was from Huda Beauty, but it's one of those. It's not the like newest one, but look at it. This is actually a fairly stunning palette. I do love their shades over here. Like I said, they do shimmers really well. And these mattes aren't as bad as some of their other mattes. Like I do like Lore, that orange right up there. Valor is a really nice color. Heroic is a nice deep color. Justice isn't as great so I wouldn't be like relying a lot on that on that color. But even like the glitter in here, I don't really like glitters but this is a fairly good glitter inside of this palette so I will be holding on to this one and it has a nice size mirror too. The last Bad Habit palette that I have is the Retro Love palette which is of course a dupe for Subculture. I'm gonna hold on to this just because I like having dupes for the shimmers in subculture because the shimmers in subculture aren't that great. The mattes I think are really good but the shimmers could definitely use a lot of work. Like I love psychedelic way more than I like cube in subculture and in my palette cube has so much hard pan in it that it's not even usable. So I'm definitely going to keep this for psychedelic. Icon is just as good as electric in the subculture palette and then Revolution is also on par with Adorn in the actual subculture palette. So I will be holding on to this because I think this is one of those dupe palettes that works better in combination with what it's duping than as like a replacement to it. So of course holding on to subculture and holding on to retro love. Next I have Modern Renaissance. Of course I will be keeping this palette. It is absolutely stunning. It is a classic and I just I really can't say more about it at this point. It's just beautiful. I also have the Soft Glam palette. 
the brush just fell out. I don't even know why I still have the brush. This is a palette that surprised me. It really blew me out of the water. I ended up loving this palette when I thought it was just boring neutrals. But to me, this isn't a boring neutral palette. This is like a like a sexy neutral palette. <laughs> I don't know. I think sexy, I think classy, and I just I love the ABH formula and for the majority part the packaging. This is it gets a little bit annoying, but I still love the packaging. And last but not least for ABH, I do have the Norvina palette. I've been testing with it, I've been playing around with it, and I really like it so far, but I am thoroughly testing each shade right now. Something that I really love about this palette, I don't know if you see the like the trend here, but I love having like mattes on the bottom and then shimmers on another row. Like I like that. I just think that's a really good way to organize a palette and I like seeing them laid out like that. So far I think my favorite shade is Dreamer in here. Just a really nice shimmer shade right there. You can kind of see it right there on my wrist but it's a really nice shade and i'm still currently testing out the rest of the shades so of so of course holding on to norvina next i have the naked heat palette from urban decay i love this palette i know a lot of people think you get the same look out of this palette but th these were the first like red shadows i ever used and i loved them um i think they did a really good job here of balancing mattes and shimmers which I think Urban Decay really struggles with but they did it really well in this palette. I love like what shades we get as mattes. I love the shimmers. They all work together really well. There's a really nice color story here and it's got a nice mirror. It's got really good packaging and the brush in this one actually isn't half bad. I don't always use it but it's not garbage. <laughs> so I will definitely be using the Naked Heat. I definitely forgot that I had this for a while. This is the MAC palette. This is one of the MAC Girls palettes, and this is in Basic B. I rarely use this. I really need to bring this out and actually, like, use it because I've only, like, swatched it and played with it, like, once or twice. So I don't want to declutter it until I've given it a really good, thorough testing. So I do need to rotate this out and use it. Maybe a one-week, one palette. We'll see. But I really just need to get more use out of this one. Next, I have another Marc Jacobs palette. This is another style icon, and this is an editorial. I got this because I love greens. <laughs> I've been talking so much, my voice is going. But I love greens, and I love like this gold right here in the middle. But I have told myself that I'm not going to touch this palette until I finish up panning the other Marc Jacobs palette that I have. So this one is currently waiting for me to finish my pan that palette. Next, we're going to go through all of my 10 pan e.l.f. palettes. I think these are really good. The formula is really good. This is the Mad for Matte 2, which was one of the first ones that I tried. I love the oranges in here. This is a really beautiful fall neutral palette, and it's so affordable. And it's hard to find really good matte palettes at the drugstore. So I think this is spectacular. We'll definitely be holding on to that one. This next one is the Jewel Pop palette. Again, it's really hard to find really good colorful mattes at the drugstore. This is $10. You're paying a dollar per pan here. I think it's a really good steal. I think the green and their blue are some of the best and I love a good orange and it's rare to find a good bright orange. Definitely holding on to this one. This is the palette in Everyday Smoky, and I'm going to declutter this one just because one of the shades did pop out and I can't get it to just stay in there. And it is fairly similar to another palette that I have. Again, this is just kind of neutral, so I'm going to declutter this one. I think I'm going to get rid of this one too. It's not a bad palette. It's the Holy Smokes palette. It's a smoky eye palette. I just don't think I'm reaching for this one as much as I am some of my other neutral palettes. It is a really great deal at the drugstore for $10, but I'm not reaching for this palette because I do have a couple other smoky palettes, so this one is going to get decluttered. The last e.l.f. palette I have is the Rose Gold Sunset, and this is one of my favorite affordable palettes of all time. It is such a good palette. Just looking at this palette screams fall. I love fall. Fall is my favorite. I love this orange right here. I love like these lighter shades. I like you have a good mixture of mattes and shimmers in this palette and for ten dollars you really can't beat it. So I will be holding on to this one. We're almost at the finish line guys. Last but not least we're going to be going through all of my ColourPop palettes. 
first I have a couple of like quads here. I'm gonna declutter this one. I don't know why I keep buying pink and purple shadows when I know I don't reach for them. This is definitely more up my alley for a quad. I love greens, I love yellows. These are just so great. Definitely going to hold on to this one. I think these are all singles and I threw them into like the free palettes, but like this is such a good, I think, arrangement of colors right here. So I consider it like a palette that I, like a personal palette. This is the Yes Please palette. I rearranged it just because I didn't like the way that they had the shadows lined up, but I love this palette use it all the time and definitely going to be holding on to it this is the my little pony collaboration palette and honestly i rarely touch this i never go for it i thought i would reach for these blues down here and i don't and if i cover up the blues then no so i need to declutter this one i think this is limited edition i don't think you can get it anymore really next i have the femme rosa palette and this one, like, it looks really pretty and the shades swatch really well. But I never reach for this palette. I think there are way too many shimmers in this palette. I think there's only, I think there should have been two rows of mattes and then a row of shimmers. Because I really don't like these mattes. I think they're too dark, even with a light hand. And I don't like the complete looks that I get out of this palette. So this is another limited edition one that I am going to be passing along. This one's a bit of a newer palette. This is the Perception palette, which was a collaboration with Makeup Shayla. I did a whole video review on this and I really didn't like this palette at all. Didn't like a lot of the looks that I got out of it and just, it seems like such a dud to me. Um, so I'm going to be decluttering this one as well. These palettes are both way too similar for me to keep them and they're really not that inspiring. The first one is the You Had Me at Hello palette. The shades in here are just so muted and I don't like the color story and it's just meh. So this one's going to be passed along as well as the I Think I Love You palette. Looking at this palette now, it just looks so boring and none of the shimmers really do much to differentiate themselves from each other or even on your eye and the row of neutrals on top are just so basic you've got these i've got these a million times over in my collection not much less anybody else so this one is going to go this is the element of surprise palette i am actually going to keep this one and of course because i like it and because i'm keeping it i dug my nail right in there like that just happened so upset <laughs> but this is my idea of a better neutral palette you've got like these nice mattes down here you've got a nice matte up here i really don't like this one shade that has got like what is it with mattes with just shimmers in them why you don't i don't we don't need that i might just depot that one shade and get rid of it and maybe put a different shade in but I do like this palette. I like the shimmers in the middle. I think they're very unique and different. So I will be holding on to this palette. This is the Golden State of Mind palette. I also got this one in a boxy charm and really not impressed. Really don't like this palette. I just, the, the formula on this one feels different from the other shimmers and I, I'm just never reaching for it. So this one has to go. The last palette from ColourPop I have is the All I See is Magic. I believe this was also a limited edition palette. This is a really nice palette. Like, I think it's a very cohesive story. It leans on the neutral side, but I like it. It's a nice bigger palette from ColourPop, and they did a really good mix of satins and mattes and shimmers in here. So I really do like this one, and I will be holding on to it as well. Okay, so these are all of the palettes that I am decluttering. And these are all the palettes that I'm keeping. <laughs> Still a lot of palettes, but I think I did a good job right here. I'm not counting right now, so I'm just going to flash up on the screen, do the magic of editing, how many palettes I've kept versus how many I've decluttered. So thank you so much for watching. hope if you guys liked this video, you'll give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And I hope I'll see you in my next video. Bye!